Erase your pores claims a skincare product. Well, actually, your pores cannot be erased. And let's talk a little bit about skin science, what pores actually are, why they cannot open or close, and why any product that is claiming to erase them is lying to you. You see, our pores are determined by things like our genetics and our oil production, and there are things that we can do to reduce the appearance of pores, meaning, you know, controlling our oil production or using makeup or smoothers. However, to actually get rid of pores would be selling you a lie. So let's break down the skin science and let's talk about that. First off, what are pores? If you look at your skin, you'll actually notice that there's these little vellus hairs that stick out everywhere. These happen all over the body, and it is true that they can get clogged all over the body. However, they usually get clogged in the facial area, the chest area, and the back area because we tend to have more sebum production here. Now what exactly is sebum production? Well, sebum is the oil that our skin naturally produces. It lubricates our hair follicles, it can transport fatty acids and even antioxidants and nutrients throughout the skin. And when our skin produces this sebum, it actually creates an acid mantle, kind of like a little fatty layer of oil or grease that we see on our face. But this actually protects our skin, a little bit waterproofing, and it stops viruses, bacteria, and pathogens from being able to get into our skin as easily. As you can see, here's a close-up look of some of the pores within your skin. And as you'll notice, there's nothing here that could really open or close them. There is no muscle or anything here that really opens or closes or shrinks or pulls. When people use hot water, to open their pores or close water to close up their pores. That technically doesn't happen. However, based on thermodynamics and how heat can make things expand and cold things can cause tightening, there may be a slight effect. However, technically speaking, and if we're going to be completely particular about it, Technically, opening and closing pores does not exist. Now, we do have little muscles here, the erector pili muscles, and these muscles can kind of pull on this hair follicle, and this is actually what makes our little hairs stand up when it's cold outside or when we get goosebumps. So although there are these tiny little muscles here, they are not the same thing as opening or closing pores. That being said, why do some people have larger pores, maybe blackheads, and other people don't? Well, when we talk about pores, there are many different things that are normal. You have normal pores that are almost smoothed over like glass skin. Usually this is done by products or lots of Photoshop and filters if you're looking at it online. There are also sebaceous filaments. This is essentially oil that builds up inside of the pore and they create these little spots that are slightly darker but they are completely normal. Um, there are ways to get them out but you should always do that gently if you're going to do it at all. And then third, which is what most people are concerned about, are things like blackheads, where there's acne bacteria, Cutobacterium acnes, inside of the pore. It oxidizes, meaning it comes into contact with oxygen, and it ends up turning black or brown out here on the skin, which is what shows up as a blackhead. When it comes to skin, the amount of pores that we have as humans is generally the same. Obviously, people who are just generally larger are going to have more surface area, and the more skin means the more pores, but in general, we all have a similar amount per square inch. That being said, why are some pores so much larger than others? And a lot of this boils down to genetics, and then also how much stuff your pores produce. We're talking about oil, we're talking about sweat, and this obviously can correlate to the environment or the place that you're living in. The other thing you want to consider is your age as well. Over time, our skin loses collagen and elastin. Collagen is the strong stuff down here in the dermis, and elastin is the stretchy stuff down here in the dermis that keeps our skin flexible. And as we age or get older, sometimes our skin can sag, and although it is minimal, people might notice larger pores as they start to get older, which is why sunscreen is, yes, very important every single day, reapplying multiple times a day. So you can't really change your genetics, but we do have epigenetics that we can change. Epigenetics can be turned on or off by our lifestyle factors and things like what you eat as well as what environment you live in or even your stress levels can change the methylation or demethylation of DNA inside of your body and this can actually change which genes are expressed and therefore what happens with your body. Now this is actually a relatively new field of research so we don't have all of those details and especially when it comes to diet and acne there's more and more research coming out to show some possible correlations. Remember correlation is not causation. However, it's premature to point at a specific diet or a specific environmental factors and say, this is what causes large pores, because that's not always the truth. But when we look at some of these correlations and we try to see what's in common, there are things that generally lead to larger pore size, which could be things like an increased oil production. If you naturally have skin that produces more oil based on your genetics, or if you are eating a diet that impacts your hormones, which can impact your oil production, that could in turn lead to your skin producing more 
oil. And as you can imagine, if there's more oil, um, sometimes it can stretch the pores if there's so much coming out. Especially if this happens years over time, it could lead you to having larger looking pores. Also the environment, if you sweat more, sweat is different than oil production. They actually are completely different glands. However, if you sweat more, if you live in a more humid environment, people generally in these tropical regions have been seen to have larger pores. So again, correlation is not causation. Is it something genetic that is happening in these areas? Could it be different foods, cultures, or is it the weather and the environment? Not for sure. However, based on observation, it currently looks like people who live in some of these warmer climates may experience larger pores. When it comes to sebaceous filaments, again, these are totally normal. These aren't something that you should be overly concerned about or try to dig at your skin to get out. Um, if you really want to, you could use something like a salicylic acid, a very mild one. These are oil soluble, so they can dissolve the oil and those sebaceous filaments. There are also some of those ultrasonic skin spatulas. You should not destroy your skin with these. I would recommend going to a basic esthetician, a medical esthetician, or a dermatologist to teach you how to use these properly. And then you could use them at home. Um, and then and you could apply a salicylic acid or other serum to the pores after to kind of fill them up before your pores start secreting more oil and more sebum of their own. There are also blackheads, and this is an important distinction because blackheads are an open comedone, so they are a type of acne. And the best way to deal with large pores based on blackheads is to treat the blackheads, aka the acne. This can be done, and you know, this is something I've struggled with my entire life, so we've spoken extensively on this channel on how to do that. But essentially look for those ingredients that have been proven by medicine to help. We're talking benzoyl peroxide, salicylic acid, sulfur, and even retinoic acid. And retinoids, anything retinoid, acid, retinol, retinaldehyde, anything in this family, even adapalene, can help with the oil control and production that happens in the skin. Other ingredients that are not FDA approved in the same way but that can help for overall oil production are things such as niacinamide, that's that vitamin B. Niacinamide can be helpful with redness or blotchiness in the skin and it can also help to regulate oil. So if you're super oily it can kind of help to regulate it and even if you're dry, niacinamide can really soothe over the skin, it can calm irritation and it is safe for dry skin too. Zinc PCA is also fantastic. This has been shown to decrease oil production, so specifically the sebum that a lot of pores like this produce. And even clay masks are fantastic. They can specifically target things such as oil and skin. And especially if you live in a humid climate, clay masks can kind of go on and try to give a little bit of oil and humidity control. Look for betonite and kaolin clays. Those are some of my favorite and those tend to work really well. When it comes to actually smoothing or blurring the appearance of pores, don't be afraid of dimethicone, don't be afraid of primers, especially makeup primers or sunscreens that kind of have that powdery, dimethicone-y, pillowy like feeling. Those can actually smooth over the skin and they really smooth over both pores and over scars. So if you do have this uneven texture, any of these silicone products can smooth them over and make pores look less apparent. Especially if you put makeup over top, you now have like a smooth canvas that you are then applying this color or pigment to, to kind of cover everything underneath. And I know that a lot of people with acne are afraid of silicones. I used to be afraid of silicones before I looked at the science, but if you look at medical papers, medical research, there doesn't seem to be a major correlation. And if you even look at medical prescriptions for acne, a lot of those active acne fighting ingredients are suspended in a dimethicone or a silicone base. So why would these prescription products to help acne literally have dimethicone or silicones if they're causing acne. So I know that it can be scary, but please look into the science before you listen to a lot of the marketing that's going on out there because silicones really can help to smooth over pores and you know make skin look a little bit smoother. The other thing that cannot be forgotten is SPF. Yes, it is needed for multiple reasons, including pore size. And this is more kind of long-term skin health. You know, when the sun hits our skin, that UV radiation can really damage our DNA. It can damage our collagen and elastin. And like we spoke about earlier, if that collagen and elastin is not giving us that great structure, the skin can start to sag a little bit and pores can have the appearance of being a little bit larger. So for the future and for today, make sure that you're applying your BFF SPF. When it comes to products that help reduce oil production in skin or help reduce the appearance of pores, I've left some of my favorites that are listed below as well as kind of why they work and how you should use them. However, if you would like an entire video of like a skincare routine to try to help minimize oily pore size or specifically blackheads, please let me know because I love helping people with their skincare. I love problem solving and helping others and creating skincare routines and talking about active ingredients is one way that I get to channel that energy into action and positivity. So let me know. Overall, 
make sure that you have liked that like button, and there's another video here that you might find interesting. Always remember to be beautiful both inside and out, and I cannot wait to see you in this next video. <laughs> Love you guys. Bye.